So we'll be talking about um, the leader of the NDP, Yagmeet Singh, has joined with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to play the game Among Us. This happened on November 29th, which as I'm, or this article is on November 29th, it happened on the 27th, I believe, which as I'm recording was three days ago. So I've noticed as I've been watching my social medias, that some people seem to think that this is a wonderful thing, that, that Yagmeet Singh has found a way to connect with the youth because, you know, the, the youth are an important voting block, as we say. And some people believe that he is pandering. So what I would like to do is look at some highlights of this, um, we see that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was grateful to all who joined. It was wonderful hearing from Yagmeet Singh. Um, thank you for reminding us that another world is not only possible, but a few hours drive from New York City, referring to affordable health care and more generous employment insurance. These are both wonderful, wonderful things that we have in our kind of hellscape country that is nonetheless slightly less hellscapey than our southern neighbor's country. Um, which doesn't make it feel much less hellscapey, really, but it is. Uh, it's all complex. Anyway, so they played Among Us, and that happened. Here are some highlights. Let's look at them. This is my first time gaming. Uh, I've been having it's his first time gaming, games. period. See if you can also use this. No, we can't. Uh, it's been really cool. I've been really so really one thing that fire. struck me. Oh! Uh, I was just looking down. I wasn't paying attention. But so far, so good, though. I don't think it's not. We have a dead Yugmeet Singh. Okay. Early on in the stream, I found that he seemed not to be super at home with the medium. Seemed like he was. Uh, probably shouldn't talk over him. I don't know what I'm doing here. Seemed like he was. Uh, just focused on <laughs> politics, which we're not really seeing here. We're seeing him flailing around trying to play the game. But anytime he had a chance, and sometimes even when meetings were going on, he was, you know, doing his little speaking bits about, about youth and about uh, how youth are getting blamed for the pandemic because, you know, they're partying. Youth likes to party, people. Yeah, they like to party. So youth are getting blamed, and Yugmeet Singh does not think that we should blame the youth. In fact, he thinks that the youth are A-OK -okay in his words. So that was a little bit awkward. I watched AOC's stream uh, a month ago, whenever it was that she did it, and I noticed her interacting with the stream. And that's a culture, culture gap. And I'm not saying this in any way to try to put down Yagmeet Singh. It may sound like that. I'm a little bit cynical at times, but this is not uh, let's put down the leader of the NDP. Because he did a good thing here. He tried. Yeah. So as the stream went along, he got a lot more comfortable. As the stream went along, him and AOC spent a lot of time talking about the differences between the two countries, about their shared vision of the way forward, um, and the real trick to that, the, the important, important, important thing is that something like 600,000 people were on AOC's stream, something like 30,000 people were on Yagmeet's stream. It is virtually impossible to get 600,000, um, 630,000 people. And, and I'm not even including the people watching all the other streamers who were all doing their streams. I'm only thinking about the um, Just AOC and Yagmeet Singh streams, to get 630,000 people listening to you talking in a conversational manner about the problems faced, that society is faced with, that's something that doesn't exist. Now, I'd like to draw a parallel if we could. The thing about media is that it changes with time. The thing about politicians and politics is that they are very, very resistant to change. We've seen at different times in history when radios come along, when televisions come along, it has dramatically changed the mechanisms politicians need to use to reach large numbers of people. It was once enough 
to be able to just be a good speech, go to a town hall, you, you say some things, you, you get the crowd rallied behind you, you get a few hurrah moments, and uh, you leave it at that. You know, it doesn't really matter what you look like. It doesn't really matter anything else. When we read history, and the history of American elections in particular, they talk about watershed moments, for instance, where JFK was able to harness television for the first time. Television became very, very important all of a sudden, and a lot of people didn't realize it, but a few people did, and it worked out pretty well for those few people who, who were with it, as the kids say. Unfortunately, that also happened four years ago. The Donald Trump campaign four years ago was excellent at harnessing social media, at harnessing Facebook, at harnessing uh, advertising through the Internet, and they were able to sweep past a Hillary Clinton campaign that I believe outspent them. I might be wrong about that. But it, it did it through old media. It did it through television and radio and newspaper buys. So, you know, newspapers, very, very relevant. Uh, rather than doing it through trying to spread through social media. And I think the guy that we can really, really blame for that is blame slash credit is Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon came from, of course, a background working at Breitbart, working in, in web media. He managed the Trump campaign, and he made a main focus out of building almost a cult-like status through social media. It's something that we still see playing out today, that we see, see elevated and amplified today. It has not gone away. It, it's still a hallmark of Donald Trump. But it's more than that. It's the future of politics, really. Playing among us is not the same as putting out Facebook ads. It's not the same as encouraging your followers to share links on Twitter. It's something different entirely. It's um, a way of creating a space for two-way interaction. Just like my chat isn't doing now. Hey, I've gone from three viewers to four. Hello, viewer number four. It's good to see you. So that is the beauty of live streaming. And that is something that within politics is incredibly important. Even the illusion of being able to interact with a politician. And, and, and often, let's be real, streaming is often an illusion of interaction. It's, it's, it's often just, uh, especially in a popular stream, the streamer is never going to read your, your, your little comment or your little emoji. But if you're watching it, even after the fact, you can easily picture yourself being the commenter, right? Like I'm, I'm talking about the general pu public here. We can, we can picture ourselves in the shoes of the few people that the streamers are choosing to interact with. It has a similar kind of appeal to like a Fox News town hall, you know, except even more real somehow because the people have not been chosen by Fox News. They're, they're, they're just complete randos. And it allows for an organic connection between the concerns of the randos in the chat room and the politicians. All of this has a tremendous humanizing effect, especially when we see politicians do the types of things that we do. And unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, Yagmeet Singh in the early stages especially, he was playing old school politics within new school media, and it didn't really work. But as he settled in, it did. So I suppose what I want to say is, for all my cynicism, spending six hours uh, on a stream with hundreds of thousands of people watching you while you are, for one thing, discussing policy, discussing the limitations of the Liberal Party, which are many and dire, discussing ways forward through pharmacare, um, talking about the importance of unionization, which they spent a fair bit of time on, actually, talking about food insecurity, and especially in the United States, giving shout-outs to communities that, that, frankly, should be shouted out more fucking often, like, uh, for instance, Canada's indigenous people, who many of whom don't even have, like, potable water, <laughs> which is, is insane, or trans rights, because fuck yeah, trans rights. You know, making the important shout-outs, connecting with people. Those moments are important. Those moments are not Pokemon go to the polls. They are not a token. 
they are the opportunity for a genuine connection. And we're heading to a period in the future where that type of connection will be the bedrock of electoral politics. It'll be the thing that people both on the far left and on the far right, less so the center, because the center is really the party that has no idea, or the party, the tendency that has no ideas, that just believes in status quo and doesn't really need to connect, connects to people who are afraid of anyone else. But if you're actually willing to propose something, this kind of thing will be the new normal for communicating in politics. And just like people once ignored TV at their peril, pretty soon they'll be ignoring Twitch at their peril. As ridiculous as that sounds, it's definitely, definitely true. So good on Yagmeet Singh for uh, starting down that road. It's, uh, it was good to see, and it was a fun stream. I enjoyed it. <laughs>